So that's an ex experiences on Pluto SCR and firmware, digital ATV, and some tricks in FPGA. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Everest, a 5 Oscar Echo Oscar. I'm a ham radio operator since 1986. Uh, I work in uh, digital TV for about uh, 15 years. I'm a software developer, mainly in C, C++ uh, language. Uh, for today, I try to uh, share you my experience uh, around the Pluto SDR platform. Um, uh, that I work now uh, for three years. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, between uh, the last conference uh, around uh, five years ago at SDR Academy, uh, I presented the RPRTX, which is a low-cost transmitter using the Raspberry Pi uh, GPIO. Uh, the project is still alive, and uh, hopefully, hopefully there is some uh, contributor like uh, GM Fritz, uh, which has, for example, uh, a GNU radio uh, block for that, and it's uh, very cool. Um, I'm a more a hacker than a DSP guru, and my mathematical skill is not uh, always at the top, which I... So I'm mainly focused on the uh, hardware uh, specific feature between uh, VS uh, agnostic uh, software, which means that there is uh, already some very good uh, PC software uh, like SDR Angel, SDR Console, SDR Plus Plus, etc. And uh, I I mainly uh, uh, focus on what feature we can. Uh, do uh, with the Pluto SDR. Uh, so it is more focused on the embedded uh, platform uh, than uh, the usage with the PC. Uh, with that, the target is to, for example, remove some bottleneck, which is the USB bandwidth of IQ. But we can do also some DSP offloading. Uh, for example, make the FFT on the Pluto itself, uh, make some modulation, demodulation, and uh, we can also target some standalone news uh, using, for example, uh, the GPS to uh, record uh, a spectrum. And of course, we have some uh, custom uh, application like the ATV. Here is, for example, my uh, setup for uh, the embedded uh, Pluto. It is uh, uh, composed of a battery pack, uh, which I'll put the 5 volt inside the Pluto and also on a, U, uh, um, a USB hub. On the USB hub is plug uh, memory stick, for example, for archiving um, IQ signals. And, but we have also a Wi-Fi access point in order to discuss with uh, uh, output, uh, well, uh, external uh, peripheral than, uh, like uh, the PC or the phone. And uh, we have a cheap GPS inside. But we can add other components like uh, uh, USB audio or USB video. Just a quick remember for the Pluto SDR because there is a lot of documentation on that and uh, already some very good presentation. Um, so just to remember that there is a ADC DAC, a zinc, which is a FPGA uh, and um, ARM CPU. And there is some flash memory in order to, uh, um, to uh, contain uh, well, the system, the Linux system, the bitstream of the FPGA, and some softwares around all that. So what is exactly a firmware? Well, it's U-boot, so it's a bootloader uh, in order to uh, uh, load the, the firmware itself, which is contained on Flash. It's not covered here. Uh, the Linux systems with some drivers, some IP stacks, and uh, the FPGA bitstream, 
which could be custom, of course. And uh, above all that, some softwares. Uh, the discussion with external worlds is through USB or, so, or Ethernet or Wi-Fi, for example. Let's start with the deep uh, state, which is the FPGA. So the FPGA uh, side is uh, done using uh, some tools from Xarenx. Uh, so we use Vivalo uh, for the Zinc 7010. Uh, we mainly had some uh, component on the graphical uh, side, but we can also use some uh, TCL scripts in order to be uh, more portable. Um, I'm not a VHDL caller, so right now I'm focused on integrating uh, some IP from Xilinx or from other like OSCIMP, ARI, etc. So what we can do with that? Um, well, first, we can offload some process, which is uh, very time consuming, even on the PC or uh, on the arm of, uh, of the Pluto. Uh, what about adding uh, FFT uh, in order to have uh, the power, uh, well, uh, the spectrum power? Um, we can we can use and and then you can you can uh, uh, send some uh, spectrum with uh, well uh, less bandwidth to a, a web socket for example or to uh, um, to average it uh, on the Pluto itself before uh, sending it, sending it to uh, other process. We can have some interpolation decimation customized, which means that on the official firmware. It's, um, it's only interpolated by eight, and uh, for some application, we need more than, uh, than that, so we have exactly the bandwidth we want. In order to, uh, ha to uh, have less bandwidth on the USB or on the Ethernet, we can uh, have less dynamic. Uh, normally, the IQ are on 16 bits, but we can choose uh, to have uh, just uh, hay bits like uh, the RTL SDR, uh, which means that we have la less dynamic but more bandwidth uh, going through the USB. In the control, we can also choose to have a C float in order to, uh, to have no power on CPU to uh, convert uh, Integra to C float. We can add also some IP, uh, very interesting IP, like DVBS2 moderator. We will uh, talk it later. We can add some sample timestamping, which, which could be required for telephony application. And we can integrate other IP, like mixer, etc. And all the, all is, um, uh, well, uh, a kind of uh, what idea you have. Okay, my next is uh, the stage of Linux. Um, we can uh, customize some drivers on the Linux um, compared to the official firmware. First, we can uh, say that the Pluto is uh, recognized as a soon card. Uh, how, why, why we do need, we do need that is, for example, to uh, use software, uh, well, for example, uh, some uh, digital uh, mod software uh, using software like uh, WSGT, FLDG. Um, as the Pluto is recognized with this driver as uh, 48 kilohertz audio cards, you don't have to uh, run an external uh, SDR software and you don't have to mess with the virtual audio uh, on the PC. All is done, uh, the demodulation is done directly on the, on the Pluto and over the USB, it's only audio baseband. 
Uh, we can add some Ethernet and USB adapters, which means that uh, not all the USB adapters are supported on the official firmware, so we can add it. Uh, we can add video for Linux who, to have some uh, USB uh, video inputs. We can have audio inputs also. Uh, with that, for example, we can uh, build a complete standalone transceiver with microphone and headphone uh, directly on the Pluto and uh, don't have any other uh, components uh, like PC. Um, we can add GPS and we can uh, customize some driver like uh, the uh, analog device uh, ADC to uh, uh, fork it and, uh, and say that the PLL go to is down limit, which is 47 megahertz instead of uh, 71 megahertz, as I remember. So with this, with this 47 megahertz, and if we have 60 mega sample, uh, divided by two, so we have 47 minus 30, which means 17 megahertz uh, signal minimum, which is uh, the low frequency uh, for Pluto. Okay, next, uh, next is uh, the upper layer, which is software. The software use, for example, uh, use the Linux drivers and also the uh, component uh, of the FPGA design. So this is uh, what I call a sweep FFT, which is a wide band receiver, spectrum receiver. Uh, you don't have, you, you can't uh, demodulate, demodulate a signal in that, but you can easily uh, see what's happening on a wide band um, spectrum. Here is, for example, uh, this is a 200 megahertz span. Uh, where we can see some telephony uh, transponder. We can see on the waterfall that there is uh, also a uplink from iPhone. Uh, the, this is possible because uh, I use the uh, quick or fast lock tuning. And uh, with this method, uh, we can uh, tune from one frequency to the other only in about a uh, few hundred microseconds instead of few milliseconds when you use the USB and uh, I.O. library. So there is some drawbacks here on that is that uh, as we uh, tune at each time 40 megahertz uh, uh, at each step, uh, at each frequency, we also uh, sample the third, fifth, and seven, and etc. harmonics. So we can have some areas um, because there is no uh, upfront filters. Uh, there is uh, some solution in software to uh, try to remove some aliases, and it is a work in progress. Here is what uh, it show uh, when you run it. So this is a 40, uh, sorry, 60, 100 megahertz span. And you see that it's quite dynamic and it is just running on a web piece, uh, on a web browser or even on the phone. Here we can see that there is some broadcast FM station uh, at the left and some television transponder. GSM ENTS at the right. Okay, so now how to uh, discuss with this uh, standalone uh, equipment? Well, we can use a very popular uh, protocol, which is MQTT. Uh, it is very popular in Internet of Things and in Domotic. So there is a lot of software uh, developed around that. This protocol is very simple and uh, quite, quite powerful uh, because uh, very, uh, well, very popular. 
Uh, so the control and the status uh, are done uh, without knowing the library specific to the Pluto. So it's just uh, some uh, very easy message to send. This message could be done, could be sent by uh, some very small uh, devices like Arduino or some, uh, some uh, web application. And with that, you can add some uh, peripheral call, for example, uh, knobs or little LSD LCD uh, displayed. Um, and all is done uh, very easily with that. Here is um, a software, which is MQTT control. Uh, we doesn't know anything about uh, the Pluto, but you can see here, for example, the RSSI uh, along with the time. The IQ samples uh, are not uh, sent through MQTT because it's not a high bandwidth protocol and it's done through UDP or web sockets. Here is an example of a graphic application done by PO2GKO. Uh, it's done on a Raspberry Pi and just using the MQTT uh, control and status uh, to the DATV application. Another uh, application is uh, recording uh, the spectrum and uh, recording the position at the same time. And then try to uh, display it. And here I just uh, take my car and uh, rock around and uh, there is some uh, DVB-T um, terrestrial television and we can see that uh, we have the RF coverage of this, of this station, but we can use it to uh, maybe have an antenna pattern. Uh, this is a proof of concept. I think that there is a lot of things with that. Now, it is a DVB-S2 receiver. Uh, normally, the receiver is done using a hardware called Minituner, uh, which run on Minitune, which is on a, on a Windows. And here, uh, the Minituner is uh, plugged directly on the USB hub of the Pluto. And um, it uses the long mind Linux uh, software, which is forked to, um, to work with MQTT. And uh, with that, here, the telephone, the phone, uh, is just uh, getting the transport stream video uh, through the Wi-Fi. Uh, and uh, just the VLC application uh, on it. Um, this is a particle of DVB-S2 modulator. The DVB-S2 modulator is normally done in, uh, on the software part, on the ARM, but uh, thanks to uh, Open Research Institutes, uh, there is uh, FPGA IP for that, and that's quite interesting because there is no CPU at all uh, usage, and uh, we can perform some very high uh, symbol rate with that. For example, here we have 15 uh, mega sample and uh, theoretically we can uh, go up to 40 mega samples so a lot of bandwidth to send video or data. Um, there is a DATV firmware uh, I developed uh, two years ago uh, which uh, is now very popular for Q100 DATV uplink. Uh, because it's a complete firmware, so you have the DVB-S2 modulator, some transport stream mix, uh, some video encoder, some analyzer, and uh, thanks to uh, a contributor for the web interface, uh, it is quite easy to, uh, to use. There is, for example, the uh, uh, transport stream analyzer of... Uh, of uh, station. 
There is a lot of future plans, like uh, making a, a VNE, well, a vector network analyzer with a, the Pluto Revision C, but we can also add some other modulator like the AB. We can uh, have more some security um, proof of concept like uh, IQ replay attack. But the list is very long and just needs to contributors to uh, uh, to have more like that. So improving depends on audience. Uh, the goal is to have several uh, several stage, which means that first the firmware is already built with all the tools um, I present here, and uh, the goal could be to uh, build some custom MQTT clients depending on the application or web interface for that. Second stage could be uh, for software developers to use some GitHub application and try to uh, transfer it to the, to, uh, to the Pluto. And uh, it's just an, an ARM cross compilation. And the third, and it's not very easy, so I think that a two days training could be a good thing for people who want to understand all uh, how uh, we can uh, we can uh, customize the FPG design and how to uh, build the complete firmware in order to um, to make some uh, custom solution. I'd like to thank uh, analog devices for some hardware samples. Um, Lama Bleu, uh, because uh, we spend a lot of time on build roots, and uh, it helps me a lot. Uh, Nats and Granwell for the FPGA side, and of course, a, a, a Open Research Institute for the DBS2 FPGA. Uh, so you can have.